it excites me to know that even long after I'm gone, the projects that I'm working on now are going to have benefits into the future. A lot of what we see happening in Snohomish County is anxiety about growth. So we're finding a lot of collisions between different interests, each with really valid concerns. What will our community look like? Will we still be able to live here in 10 years? How do we balance visitor trade with quality of life? We're one of the fastest growing counties in the nation. Uh, we're expecting another 200,000 people to move here in the next 20 years. We're also you know, just north of the Seattle, King County area. A lot of folks, a lot of people coming down from British Columbia use this area for recreation. So uh, it really is our responsibility to make sure we understand both the uses now of our um, river streams, our wildlands and forests, but also uh, how we plan for the future and what those demands are going to be. So we know that the demand for outdoor recreation is going to do nothing but increase. And how do we manage that and really plan for the future growth that's going to be coming in this area? And that's really our responsibility. I've been on a lot of different rivers in, in the United States. I've, as an instructor and a guide for a lot of different companies, I've seen uh, rivers progress in their education that's being done, uh, the, the signage that's going on, the groups that are taking care of the rivers, and we don't have a lot of takeouts and put-ins and bathrooms and, and things that a lot of the other rivers around the country are getting, especially with the use that we have. We have double, triple the population in this area from when I was little using this river without any more facilities to help keep the rivers clean and really direct the traffic in the right areas. Most of my job is related to salmon recovery work. So the uh, Snohomish Basin is the second largest basin in Puget Sound and its salmon contribution to the Puget Sound population is extremely important. Iconic salmon is 40 pounds, and this is what most people visualize when they're thinking about salmon. But when I think about salmon, I think about the two and a half inch fish that has just made its way out of its nest and it's working its way down the side of the river, feeding and growing all the way down as it makes its way from freshwater to saltwater. Juvenile salmon require different types of habitat than the large salmon do. And so, what we really focus on are things like natural edge, so uh, rivers naturally have pretty messy edges. They have lots of plants, lots of trees that are falling in, lots of little nooks and crannies for these fish to hide as they move downstream. Rivers are really good at creating fish habitat on their own. So whenever we can, remove human constraints on the system and let the river create its own habitat. It's best to work with the river as much as possible when you're doing restoration. Before I got into county government, I was a fisheries biologist. I spent a lot of time early in my career uh, hiking the mountains and the streams and the rivers here in the county. I just know that they're a, an incredible asset. They're also sensitive. They can be overused. They can be abused. And so I think I have an opportunity to help make sure that we're protecting those resources. But how do we help make sure that when we're enjoying those resources, we don't destroy them at the same time? So, you know, I've got a, just a great opportunity here to help guide uh, the future. They need to know where to go because people will create social trails. There's a lot of confusion um, in our county about where to go. What's Where is a public access site? Some of them are not well marked. Some of them don't have the appropriate uh, facilities and, and containers to uh, deal with humans that are coming there. The signage is essential because it educates. As you come up to this beautiful scenic put in or take out that says, okay, Here's what you should be wearing. These are the local hazards. This is what's happened in, during this flood season. Here's some historic things you should look at as you're heading down the river. You know, be careful. If you see these tags out there, it means that there's fish, you know, hatching right now. There's fish spawning, and you know, don't get out of your boats if you see fish in this spot or that spot. You know, those are the things that you know it would wouldn't take but five minutes of somebody reading, and they would have a much greater understanding of the water they're about ready to get on. The Tulalip tribes have talked to us about the meaning of these rivers as a lifeway. And we like this idea because it positions the river system in a different light for people. It's all connected. We are seeing the surface of it, but underneath it is all connected. All people and all things that are in that valley have an important position to each other.
You know, we spend a lot of time thinking about the future of the county. And to me, one of the, the greatest assets we have for the future is the natural beauty of this place. You know, to me, that's what makes uh, Snohomish County special. We've seen each other really understand multiple viewpoints. The effort started largely as a way to manage recreation and it's become much more a story about environmental concerns and finding the proper role for recreation within that bigger concern of that lifeway.